This video is about section 4-1 and we'll be talking about congruent figures. Now congruent polygons have congruent corresponding parts, meaning that they're matching or they're corresponding sides and angles are congruent. Okay, so I have an example here of a quadrilateral. So quadrilateral ABCD is congruent to quadrilateral EFGH. Okay, and what that means is the corresponding sides, these are all the sides, and the corresponding angles will all be congruent. Okay, so all the corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, um, one more thing to point out is that when you name congruent polygons, you must do them in the same order. So if I name the first one quadrilateral ABCD, then the, the second one that I name has to go in the same corresponding order. So A corresponds with E, B corresponds with F, C corresponds with G, and D corresponds with H. Um, those two orderings have to match. Okay, here's an example. Um, if quadrilateral HIJK is congruent to quadrilateral L, M, N, O, then what are the congruent corresponding parts? Okay, the sides are, let's see here, H, I will correspond with um, L, M. Okay, so they correspond and they also are congruent in this case, so I'll just write congruent. H, I is congruent to L, M. Um, I, J course, uh, sorry, is congruent to M, N. Um, JK is congruent to NO, and finally um, KH is congruent to OL. Okay, those are the sides. The angles are a little simpler. Um, angle H is congruent to angle L. Angle I is congruent to angle M. Angle J is congruent to angle N. And angle K is congruent to angle O. Okay? Now, um, here I had the picture, which was helpful. Um, but really, all you need is this congruent statement. Okay? Angle, sorry, segment HI is congruent to angle LM. Okay, or angle JK is congruent to angle NO. That the fact that this is in order will give us everything that we need to know. Okay, so angle J is congruent to angle N. That, that they're ordered the same, and so I can pick off um, a segment or an angle from, from this statement and know that those segments or those angles are congruent. Now, in this problem, we just have the statement. If triangle WYS is congruent to triangle MKV, then what are the congruent corresponding parts? Now, using just the statement and the order of the letters, we can um, identify the congruent corresponding parts. So the side um, WY is going to be congruent to side MK, because they're the first two letters. Okay, the same is true about the second and third letters. YS will be congruent to KV. And finally, the first and the last, um, WS, is congruent to MV. Okay, the same thing is true with angles. The first two angles, first two letters, angle W will be congruent to angle M. This, the middle letters... Angle Y is congruent to angle K. And finally, the last letters, angle S is congruent to angle V. Okay, here's a picture. Are the triangles congruent? If so, justify your answer. Okay. Um, for them to be congruent, all the corresponding parts have to be congruent. Okay. I know these sides are congruent because of this mark. These are both six, so they must be congruent. These are both four, they must be congruent. Okay, I have two angles already. Um, are these angles congruent? Well, they are, B 
because of the because they're vertical angles. And by the vertical angles theorem, they would be congruent. So all the corresponding parts are congruent, and so the answer is yes. Okay, and I'll label them a triangle. I'll call it A, B, C is congruent to triangle. The order must match. And so A corresponds with E, B corresponds with D, and C corresponds with C. Next one. Um, angles in congruent triangles. Now in a triangle, if you know two of the angles, then you always know the third angle. Okay, and the way I'd find this is by taking 180 and I'd subtract 120 plus 25, which is 145. Okay, and that gives me 35. Okay, and this one is would be 180 minus 75 plus 75 is 150, which gives me 30. So this angle must be 30. You get the idea that if I know two angles, then I will know the third one. Okay, which leads us into the question of what if I have two triangles and I know and I have two congruent angles. So this is congruent to this one, and this one's congruent to this one. Will the third angles be congruent? And the answer is yes. And that leads us into what's called the third angles theorem. That if I have two triangles, um, sorry, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two triangles, sorry, two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are congruent. Okay, and here's the picture of if angle A is congruent to angle D and B is congruent to angle E, then by this third angles theorem, angle C must be congruent to angle F. Okay, so um, last question. Is triangle CNG congruent to triangle DNG? Okay, I already have a lot of information already here, uh, but I'm missing a side and an angle. Okay, now the angle will be congruent, so angle CGN will be congruent to angle DGN by the third angles theorem. which we just talked about, because the other two angles are congruent, these third angles must be congruent. Okay. Also, GN will be congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So, since all of the corresponding parts are congruent, meaning all the corresponding sides are congruent and all the corresponding angles are congruent, then yes, they are, um, they are congruent. Okay, so this uh, video was about the congruent, um, about congruent figures. Um, you should now know what it means for two polygons to be congruent. You should now be able to identify congruent corresponding parts, and you should also be able to use the third angles theorem.